we just did. We're live. I'm just oh. getting a massage from Jenny Doan. It's yeah, fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, oh, that's what dreams are made of right there. That is what there. dreams are made of, absolutely. <laughs> Don't tell my husband. Okay. I make him massage me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan, and I'm here with the fabulous Jenny Doan. Her mother-in-law. My, my wonderful mother-in-law. Or as mother -in -law. she would say, <laughs> my mother. <laughs> well, what would I say? My, that I'm your mother-in-law. Yeah, that's what I would say. I was going to say yeah. nothing else. You have a um, hair. Got yeah. it. Got Thank it. you. All right. Anyway, Let's get all this hair out of the way. Welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we are excited. This week, we're going to talk about crumb quilting, which is stuff we, we've like mentioned it lots, and we've got lots of requests to uh, dive deeper into it and alive. So Jenny agreed to come and show us the ways. Show me, show you my crumbs. Show yes, you my crumbs. All the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I actually cleaned up my crumbs and oh, what? What? What do we? Mary never reminded me to go live on Facebook. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, we're live. We're, we're good. Live. All right, we're live on all the places. We're live on all so the places. So let's do a little recap then since Facebook just joined in. Um, for those of you who missed that <laughs> oh, massage, we danced. Yeah. Jenny gave me a you, massage. It YouTube was, great. was there. There we um, go. I'm Misty Doan. This is Jenny Doan. And we are going to talk a little bit about crumb quilting, which is a great way to use up your scraps. So thanks for being here with us. Yes, and it, we accumulate a lot of scraps. Yes. I mean, they are. Uh, it's we got an Indonesia. You got what? Someone from Indonesia. Yeah, we Indonesia. got a ton of people here. Let me let me give you some cut outs since neither one of you guys have the Oh, okay. Yeah. The Facebook Indiana. Awesome. Ohio. Which is like Indonesia, only on the Ohio, other side of the world. It starts again. with an I. Oh, hi. That has an I in it. Puerto Rico. Puerto oh, Rico. Puerto Rico. I love it. Switzerland. Holy smokes, guys. That's awesome. So many international yeah. viewers. We appreciate Charlotte, North being Carolina. Here. That's in my brother's neck of the woods. Wow. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here, guys. So we are going to talk all about crumb quilting. And if you have not accumulated as many scraps as we have, today only for our daily deal is a scrap bag. And so there's a link to that in the post if you the want. The daily deal? I thought it was fat yardage. It's a scrap bag. It's a, in a bulk sale. So yeah. we're in a bundle. Oh, so you'll, you'll get more yardage than scraps. Yeah. It's yeah. Four pounds of fabric. Four pounds it's, of fabric. Pretty great. So. Yeah, it's it's like almost seven yards wow. for like twenty nine bucks. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal if you want to build up that stash of yours. So that. However, you probably aren't going to want to use that for crumbs. Maybe not. Well, here's here's why because crumbs really are crumbs. Tiny. They're your yes. tiny pieces. So Get if you in guys here. if you guys can zoom in here and look at this, what looks like a beautiful piece of fabric is actually tiny little pieces that sewn, are sewn together. together. Can you see that? Are, are you getting the up close and personal? He's got it. He says. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I actually started crum crumb sewing when uh, Victoria Finley Wolf came out to visit me years and years ago, uh -huh. and she said to me, um, "Have you ever seen my book, Fifteen Minutes of Play?" And uh, you know, I'm like, "Well, what is that about?" And basically, it's kind of how she rejuvenates her creative juices. And she says at the beginning of every day, before she sews anything else, she just sews random things, and um, and just sews without. With abandon, yeah. you know, I mean, without purpose. So, yes, yeah, so much of what we do is structured, and we have to cut this, and this has to be cut on this line, and we have to sew a quarter of an inch, and we have to do all this, and none of that matters with crumb sewing. And so, I started actually doing that. And to be honest, on the days I remember, um, it is probably one of the most relaxing things I do because awesome. nothing matters. And literally, it doesn't matter what you put together, it doesn't matter what size it is, and because by the time it gets big enough, you're going to cut it into a square. And so I brought um, some scraps, a tiny sampling <laughs> of yes. my crumbs. Yes. Like I dug through my giant boxes of crumbs to get this awesome little sampling of I love crumbs. It. <laughs> oh, and some sample blocks. To be honest, it feels so much more usable like this, yes. you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there comes a point where, you know, you, you just can't do it. But see, I've got these, these blocks that I've done. Awesome. And this one needs a little pressing right here. Well, I can but what's fun about, I make them into 10 inch square sizes and I, I use this ruler right here. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I do so much with pre-cuts, I can, um, it's, it's the same exact size as a 10 inch square now. Right, so it becomes just like a piece of print it fabric. It becomes like a piece of print fabric. That's exactly what it does. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we used it here. On this you know we made the long instead of half square triangles we made half rectangle triangles and um, we made these long blocks with it and these are all just 
um, tiny, tiny pieces of fabric that we've sewn together. And so, uh, so I just want to show you some of these because... Oh, I love these with the little triangles. Yeah, so every, any little piece of scrap you have, you know, you can use it on these. And I have some. And then um, kind of what I do is, like I'll have a morning where I'll, I'll uh, start sewing and I'll start a whole bunch of blocks because it's way easy to do this um, by chain piecing. And I keep those little starters. These are like... These are like bread starters right here. These are the beginning. And if you leave them alone, your your scraps... They keep growing. They keep growing. They just keep growing. It's, it's true. Just, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. We have, we have a, a guy, um, one of our filmers who works here, and he has a sourdough starter, you know, and it just grows and grows. And if he doesn't make enough bread, I'm telling you, you know... And he brings it to us, and it's delicious. I know. And I know. We, There's we a, never complain. We never complain. <laughs> never. No. He's so, a sweetheart. So basically, uh, oh, Jake just chimes in. He likes the bread. He it, likes the he bread. He does. It's true. Yeah. All right. So basically what I do is I find a little bit longer piece, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I sew all these little pieces to it. The other thing is, is if you don't have scraps ready then you can, um, you can prepare them. So like here I have a bigger piece and I would cut this down into Some small strips. Strips and squares. And, um, and I'll show you several different methods of doing that because I'm just gonna kinda let you have, and here's, like, here's a block I'm not gonna use. So I can cut this into pieces so, and it looks like I've pieced oh, all those tiny little pieces. Somebody wants to know about that ruler. Oh, the ruler. It's actually a great little ruler. Yeah. It's just 10 inches square. Um, it's marked so that you can see that you have all four corners. And basically, you'll see when I get one of these big enough, you'll see because um, we just lay it on top of it and trim around it. Right. Then all the pieces we trim off go back into my scrap bucket. And there are even tinier pieces yeah, to, to sew on. To use the next time yeah. around. So, uh, so let's go ahead and let's start some, some sewing on this. All right. And nope, you're going to grab, grab pieces out of there. Okay. Yeah, we want, we want all the pieces. We had another question is, is it, is it easier to use foundation or no? Um, so we actually have 10 inch squares that you can foundation piece on. And um, I wouldn't say it's easier. I would say it's sixes. You know, if you want to use foundation pe pieces and make sure, actually know when you get to six inches, uh, I mean, when you get to 10 inches, I mean, that would be a great way to do it. And sure. you, just, you just lay it on and sew and you just lay it on and sew and lay it on and sew and you you know you're just going to do that over and over again um i kind of um i don't generally do that just because i'm oops just because i'm uh you have to actually wait which what you're doing a little bit <laughs> so i don't generally do that just because i um now i can't even remember what i was going to say what were you talking about you were talking about foundation piecing. foundation piecing yep. okay um just because i just start sewing you know so i don't generally do it on a square uh you know, unless I'm really going to make something. Like if I'm doing string quilts, yes, always yes. on a square, always on a piece of paper. But for the crumb piecing, I mean, it'd be way easy to do, but, uh, but it doesn't matter. All so right. So what's the smallest so, piece you'll keep? Uh, an inch. Inch by inch. Yeah. One inch square. Inch by inch and row by row. Gonna make these scrappies grow. Yeah, she's got <laughs> some little little triangles in here that she saved. All right, so basically what I'm doing, you're just gonna kinda um, wanna keep a watch on this. I'm basically just going to keep sewing pieces on here. And now I've got a strip. And ordinarily what I would do is I would add little pieces to fill in all this. So these little pieces right here, I would put another one on here. Um, you know, or, or I'd find one that didn't hang off the end. I'm, I'm just a little funny about that hanging off the end sure thing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew these two pieces this way on here, like this. So you take up all the whole strip. And does it matter if it's straight? No. Does it matter about your seam allowance? No. We're just making scraps. We're making fabric out of scraps, out of scraps. so it's bigger. I'm going to let you go ahead and cut those All open right. and press them, and I'm just going to start another one here. Sounds good. And um, keep going. Somebody asked if you sorted them in color. If what now? You sort by color. You know, that might be really smart, but I don't. <laughs> I just, it's just kind of whatever... Yeah, I guess it would Whatever depend on what you're working on, but if you if you already sort all of your scraps by color or something like that, it would be really fun to do kind of all the same So colors. I actually am working on right now a, um, a string quilt that is all greens and blues. Oh, I got And that's so pretty. those I keep kind of in 
in one place. And you'll notice I didn't even use a ruler on that because I'm going to let Misty iron that and I'm going to just keep adding. Oh, see, here's one I've sewn together. And um, sometimes what I want to do, and let me show you, sometimes I'm going to sew it on this way and sometimes I'm going to sew it on this way. Now this way looks like it'll fit real nice, so I'm going to go ahead and use that side. Perfect. See if you can find any other pieces in there. Like, like solo pieces? Yeah, no, like a, like a piece that has pieces sewn to it. Oh, oh, oh. Like, a, yeah, like that one. This one? Here, let me, uh. You want me to press it or not? Sure, sure. Okay. Go ahead. She's a wild girl over there with the iron. I am. All right. There's that one. Thank you You're very welcome. much. And I'm just going to sew this. Actually, I'm going to put this one down and sew it to this side because that's where the little pieces are. Here's some more pieces. And you can iron. You, you don't have to iron. You can iron when you're done. You know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. This is, a, um, this is just a really fun way. So you'll see right here what I'm doing is I'm adding on these little pieces that she found. I'm adding them onto this bigger strip. And if I want to make a skinnier strip, I don't even have to cut it. I just can sew further in and it's going to be really skinny make your seam allowance wider. Right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. All right, so now I'm going to have I'm going to have three pieces on here and you're going to cut those apart. All right. Here's these. And that's why I'm that's why I'm always working on a couple of blocks at a time. Like here's one here. And so I can actually I'm actually going to sew this onto this edge. Yes, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um somebody asked if all the little bits have to be square or a rectangle I have some I have some um, I have some triangles here to be honest I don't love the triangles because they don't line up very well right, you have to now work harder yeah if you sew if you sew several of those together um, like for instance sometimes on these little ones you know you could go through obviously I've cut these off together and you could go through and sew that seam and press them open and then you have a square which is easier to sew squares to the strips than it is triangles. Uh, just makes them work better. This one right here needs a little trim over here. All right. I'll do that. And let me see what we got here. All right, so I got, I've got these pieces here. I'm gonna sew those together. Awesome. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna put in, let me put a few pieces on this end. Well, I'm going to have to sew some together to get it. Here, show us what you're doing on that All right. cutting mat. So, uh, so this piece right here, and I rarely do this, so it's almost 10 inches. So this piece, I want to sew alongside of it like this, but I feel like I need to add something along this edge right here. So do we have like a, maybe there's a strip in here that's a little oh, bit wider. Maybe one of these. There you go. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add this. Actually, let me do this color. I'm going to add this to this, the bottom of this right here. And see how this is slanted? I'm actually going to sew along the slant. So then I get a little piece in there that has a little bit of a, of a slant to it. And I'm okay with that. A little bit wonky. It's good. Yep. First off, I got to ask you guys. What do you guys think of the cutting mat, the new cutting mat? Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. We do have a new cutting mat. This is actually a cutting mat by Riley Blake, and it's Christopher Thompson. It's his signature mat, and uh, it is pretty, isn't it? I, I think it's really pretty. I think it's pretty, and I like that the fabric pops off the black. I do too. All right, so I'm going to put this right here. Awesome. And then you're going to trim that corner off down there. All right. And so we're going to come over here. I think this is so fun because it just opens your eyes to how little waste there really has to be. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, one of my favorite things, when you see really old quilts, here, go ahead and press Oh, they that. would piece all the time to have enough. Yeah, so, so you'll see a, a really old quilt, and it'll have like a little red piece, like a little hexagon. Mm -hmm. And when you look closely at it, all of a sudden you notice there's like two seams. And they sewed tiny pieces of fabric together to make that piece. And I love that uh, about piecers. I just love Are that. Big enough? So let's see if we're big enough. Not 
white. Okay, if we come up here, nope, we need to add another strip over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this corner like this with my, and I have a fabulous new blade I in know. here. So nice. That's like like a little little amazing. Now, see how how wide these are. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of going to cut those in half. So um, skinny them up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to add a bigger strip, but I like the smaller pieces. I like the look of that. I need another strip. I have like a little. Oh, oh a skinny. That's probably not going to be bad one. enough. Oh, that's a good one. There we go. All right. Somebody wants to know what the iron you're using is. This is an Aliso Auto Lift Pro. It's pink. The it's only pink. iron with feet. <laughs> yeah, can you, it's pink it and it's fun because uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, Missy it, used it last it, week for uh, the breast cancer. Activated. Yep. Supporting breast cancer and we love that it's pink. It's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna let you. Trim it up again. And iron it. Okay. And actually, we can just trim it like this. With scissors this time. Yeah, because yeah, we're going to trim around it. So iron that. Okay. Copper says she's trying to come the second week of November. Ooh. Oh my gosh. So anybody out there who wants to come next week, Yes. this is going to be a huge thing next week. So we're having a big fall festival. And there are four or five fabric companies, four or five. Five? That are coming. Five and e every day is donated or is... Um, Sponsored. Sponsored by a fabric company. And so Moda has a day and Henry Glass has a day. Yeah. Uh, Andover has Riley a day. Blake, Riley Andover. Blake has a day. And Island Boutiques. Is that, and is and that Island one? Boutiques. And they're all bringing in a designer yeah. to do a trunk show. Well, on, more than one designer. On that day. Yeah. At least one. Yes. And uh, yeah, like actually I think most of them have a couple. Yeah. And then I'm actually doing four new trunk shows. I know. I, I, I so. actually, like, I want to see all your new trunk shows. I know, right? Yeah. I'm excited. I want to see them, too. Oh, I, I can't no, wait. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, have, I have them ready to go. Yeah, that's right. going to be so fun. And there's still tickets available. That's next Absolutely. week here in town. Yeah, that's next week. Yeah. So, so let's can, do, like, a little, like, rundown of what we've done so far. All right. All right. So we've took it. We've took it. Taken. Taken, thank yeah. you. We took We've her. Taken lots of little pieces and sewn them together. And normally, to be honest, mine never come out this square. No. Rarely. I've like a long piece over here and a piece here. And um, and so this came out nice. And so now I'm just going to lay my um, my ruler on here. So because it's clear, I can see exactly what's on here. And I want these smaller pieces more than this big piece. Sure. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull this over because if this is at least an inch. You can use it again. I can still use that. Yeah. And so I'm going to pull this over like this and trim all the way around it. You get a perfectly square block when you do that. So this side and then we're going to come across here. Billy said they're excited to see us in Waco. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Waco. That's only a few weeks away. Yeah. If any of you ever get a chance to come see Jenny on the road, that's a different trunk show as well. Yes. And um, so much fun. That yes. show is just hilariously we have a funny. Good time. All right. So here's our block. And just like that, you get a piece of fabric that you made from nothing. Yeah. And now you can use this for anything you would use a 10 inch square for. Sure. So I've actually seen uh, loads of these. If you go online and look at crumb quilting, you'll see, I mean, people really just put them together. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do them in smaller blocks, mm -hmm. you know, sizes. Uh, but I love the idea that if I put this with a 10 inch square, and sew it all the way around it and cut it, I would have half square triangles. Right. Or I could do pinwheels, or I could do, and they'd be this, oh, this all random. Little, little pieces. Yeah, random fabric. Yeah. Um, it would also be fun, honestly. You know, you see these these quilts online that have, t I mean, they're just the whole quilt. It's just teeny, teeny, teeny pieces. And yeah. so if you started putting these together, you know, like this, I just, you know, get a look at what this is going to be, because this would be super fun to see all these different you know, no rhyme nor reason, but it would just look it. like some of those really scrappy quilts that we see in our in our past. Well, you and know? this is interesting. You actually have quite a few black and white prints, and so somehow it pulls it all together. <laughs> see all these little oh, black yeah. and white prints? Huh. Well, look at that. That's so cute. But look how fun this would be just to have a whole quilt of pure scrappiness. I love it. Wait one more. i gotta, I got to finish out my squares. I love it. We can Wouldn't that be really awesome? And then the flip side of that, of course, is you could sash them. Right. You know, you could uh, you could cut them into you could make stars out of. I mean, you could yeah. make anything out of this because this now just becomes fabric. Right. I love it. It's yeah. So so fun. And it's so, so fun. I and, love it too. And like I said, I just think it's so great that it it takes your 
your waste bin or your scrap bin and it opens your eyes. It doesn't have to be waste anymore. So one of the things I want to tell you, though. Somebody said a black sashing would be a really cool idea. It would. Idea. Beautiful. It would be gorgeous. It would, it would just be also, gorgeous. Also, they want to know where to buy that iron. Uh, from our website, MissouriQuiltCo.com. <laughs> www.missouriquiltco.com. That's right. Now, I have to tell you that pretty much um, Victoria lied about the 15 minutes of play. <laughs> because when I come in, I actually set a timer for 15 minutes. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, pause. Pause. I can't stop at 15 oh, minutes. Oh, I was going to say. 15 minutes isn't enough time I for me. I thought you were saying you got bored too soon no, or something. No, no okay. because you're, it's just, it feels, so, the relaxing right. part feels so good. It so just, then you need at least 30. Well, <laughs> well, sometimes I go till somebody says I have to do something That's else, right. you know. I mean, it's just, it really is super relaxing. And at the end of the day, this, this just really appeals to my thrifty nature. Yeah. You know, I mean, the fact that, I mean, I could have something amazing mm -hmm. with, this, yeah. it, it just appeals so much to my thrifty nature. I love it. And so this so, is a great question. I love it. She asked, do we have to be worried about which way the seams are ironed? <laughs> That's okay. a lot of seams. Let me tell you my ironing theory. This is my ironing theory according to Jenny Dome. <laughs> what we're looking for when we iron is a flat block. It's a nice flat block. Now there are some crazy ironing people out there, but let me just tell you. What we're looking for is a flat block. So press it, steam it, whatever you want to do, get a nice flat block. If you have something that's like popping up, right. look at it, see if you need to do anything and maybe you can press it one way or the other or open and, it, and it's going to be, fl but going to be flat. But Because what we're looking for is a flat block. That being said, I want you all to remember this. Now this is important. If anyone ever looks inside your quilt to see which way you ironed, they are not your friend. No, they're not. They're not your friend. <laughs> Nobody looks inside the quilt. Nobody does. Yeah. So, uh, so no stress about the ironing. I hope that solves all your problem for you. And that goes with all ironing. This is not just crumb piecing ironing. Yeah. Nobody has ever opened up my quilt to look inside to see which way I ironed. Yeah. Thank heaven. No. You know, so I don't die over the ironing thing. That is just not, uh, <laughs> it's just, yeah. that's just one of those things I choose to be like, we're going to let that go. No, we are all about finished is better than perfect. We right. We mean it. Right. And, and to be honest, if I had a thing on here where, it, you know, right. where it was really bubbling, it was obvi obvious, bumping up, yeah. you know, I would flip it over and I would go. Now, like this right here, see where this is? One seam is on one side and one oh, seam's yeah. on the other right here. I don't know if you can see that. If that was bubbling up or it bothered hold me. Hold up, hold up. I, m I missed it. I missed it. Right here. Uh-oh. So right here. So see how this is like half and half or I want all the seam to if you know if now it wasn't bumping up but right. if it was bumping up here's what I do I would just clip this little piece right here and I would lay that down yep and just like that you have a flat top again because what we're looking for is a flat top exactly you know so um so like on this side right here um just you know just press it down and and but I'm looking mostly from this side I want to make sure this so go ahead and press this over okay because There's that, a saying that I kind of came up with. Yeah. Just finished is better than perfect. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Jake, Jake kind of came up with that. <laughs> He's like, Mom, just finish that quilt. I'm freezing. Don't worry about the seams. <laughs> just finish it up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It. There we go. There we go. Easy peasy. So more questions, or do we just want to make another block? I have no idea. What do you think, Jake? We is anybody one. coming next week? If you're coming next week, send us a heart. Yeah. I mean, I want to see if know. anybody's coming. We're excited. I mean, I know we've sold some tickets and stuff, but any of you guys. Yeah, we would love to see you in town. Oh, look at this little black and white. Oh, that's cute. I actually made that from a Christmas quilt for my granddaughter, Katie. She plays the piano, so I made her a music quilt. I'm very impressed that you remember oh. what that scrap came from. I have no idea how I did, to be uh. honest. <laughs> I was like, is this real? She really knows. I really knew. That's amazing. But yeah. I remember I made, um, with these are, cause these are, these are small strips. Right. And I remembered I made a little, uh, just a little bitty um, checkerboard uh -huh. on the bottom of it. And one easiest way to make a checkerboard is to, is to, is to put your pieces together. So strips together sure. and then cut them this way. Yeah. That's awesome. So we do have a different quilt up behind us today. Oh yes, so this, we hung this quilt because it features some of the uh, crumb quilting in it. This is the trailblaze uh -oh. pattern. What happened? Just out of bobbin. Oh darn it. Grabbing another. This is the trailblaze pattern. Um, it's available on our website and also. Wait, I have a pattern right here. Here's yep, the pattern. Here it is. 
Here's the pattern for that. And then this is using those same blocks that she teaches in that trailblaze tutorial. Uh, we made a cute little throw pillow as well out of the crumb quilt. So they want to know if we sell that 10 inch. I'm sorry, what? We do. The oh, ten it's also in the most recent mod block. The 10 inch, um, oh dear. I'm gonna have to try another bob and okay. I can't tell where the thread begins. <laughs> oh no. Do you guys ever have that trouble? <laughs> That's terrible. So I never, let me just tell you a minute about pre-wound bobbins because I never ever, um, I was too cheap to use a pre-wound bobbin. Can you see where the thread starts on that? Maybe I'm just blind. Um, but I, I was always too cheap to use a pre-wound bobbin. Here it is. And then I realized that my, I was just blind, wasn't it's, I? It's fine. I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. <laughs> so anyway, I was always too cheap to use a pre-wound bobbin. And then I realized that I'm buying this thread anyway. Yeah. So I decided to give one a try. Somebody sent me one and I'm like, or Baby Lock sent me one actually. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try these pre-wound bobbins. Now, when I come in in the morning, I actually, I actually um, uh, wind about six or eight bobbins. Mm -hmm. And then about two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon, I wind some more. Mm -hmm. When I sew with a pre-wound bobbin, and I'm not kidding you, I can sew a day and a half without changing that bobbin. Because it's wound so tight. It's wound tighter and the thread is finer. They, yeah. use, they use just a little bit finer thread. And so uh, I was just like, it saves me so much time. That's amazing. And I'm buying this thread anyway. So I decided to not die over pre-wound bobbin. And now I'm like addicted. That's I, awesome. I love them. RV so. wants to know when Ezra's doing his new his next show. Oh, his next Ezra. show. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I don't know. Misty, hit. tell him how to get to that tutorial because that is, is that, can we put a link? We it, might be able to add a link. Mary can add a link too. To so Ezra's Missy and Jake. We'll put it in the chat here. Missy and Jake have um, three children. Yes. My grandchildren, of course. And, um, and uh, when, and of course they do all the filming and editing. So the kids are around those tutorials a, a lot. lot. And when Ezra was four, he said, Hey, Dad, I want to do a tutorial. Yeah, and he was home from school that day. He didn't have preschool or something. And, and, uh, and so he's, he's just up here, and, um, and so he's, he's stood up here. And I was actually traveling, and so Ezra, Ezra made this little tutorial, and Jake sent it to me, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. The, all the ladies must see this, you know, put <laughs> this out there. Cute. So he actually stands up here, and he's like, hi. My name is Ezwa. <laughs> Take a look at this quilt behind me. You know, I mean, he's so just, cute. he said it just like I did because he watched yeah, so he many of them. It. And um, he just was, oh my gosh, it's so darling. And he's only four. Yeah. Now he's, now he's almost eight. Almost eight. I know. Yeah. Time There's flies. There's a good, good question about pre-wound bobbins. So yes. they're just asking like, you have to, every machine has a different bobbin size. Yes. Right. Yes. So you do have to buy the one that fits your machine. Yeah, that's right. true. That's true. And and are there certain brands that you like, stuff like that? So we, I think we use Filtech is what we use. Yeah, I think and, we um, and, uh, yeah, Filtech. Yeah, and most of them are the same. There's kind of an, there's what they call an L class yeah, and an L a class C is, class. Well, uh, 15, Wait. L and 15. Oh yeah, class 15. class 15. Now, whoever came up with that I numbering no method idea. has lost their mind. But um, there's a fat one and a skinny one. Yes. And the fat one we use in our ever sewn, and then um, and this, the only machine that I know of that uses the skinny one is my Baby Lock Jane. Yeah. Whoop. And it's a that's it's a commercial machine, and it uses a flatter bobbin. So most of them are probably going to fit the fat ones, but um, man, they just save me so much time. I love yeah, them. Love, easy. love, love them. All right. Well, I think. Wait, are we done already? I think we're done. I think we made it. I think it. we've about all right. covered all of this goodness. I, I was hope just going to keep sewing. Well, you can. <laughs> I mean, I'm relaxing. not going to stop you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, video about crumb quilting and that you will look at your scrap bags with a whole new set of eyes and make oh, something amazing. No kidding. Yeah. yeah that'd absolutely. be fun to see. So thanks for being here, Jenny, and we will see you guys next Tuesday. Awesome. See you later. See you guys.